Hi, I'm Guo Xi. I'm a PhD student in Kyoto University. Today, I'm going to present our paper, Improving Pairwise Rank Aggregation via Querying for Rank Difference. This is a joint work with Ji Yilin and Hisashi Kashima. First, I will describe the background of this research. This study considers the pairwise rank aggregation task. The goal is to find a ranking over a set of objects according to some criterion. This is a very general framework. The objects are arbitrary and primitive, and the ranking criterion is thus dependent. For example, on the right I show some examples taken from a dataset. The task is to rank humans by their age using images. In the middle, I show some short English passages, and the task is to rank this passage by their reading difficulty for children. On the right, I show several candidate logos designed for a machine learning research lab and the task is to rank these logos by suitability. As you can see, PRA is a task with many applications. A line of work utilizes crowdsourcing for PRA. The benefit of this framework is that from crowd workers, you can obtain comparison outcomes of complex objects easily. To do this, you first compile your objects into pairs. Then you write a description for your task. In this case, the description can be between the two persons which one looks older. Then you post these pairs and your task description on some crowdsourcing platforms, and then you ask workers to complete them. After that, you can collect answers and aggregate them into a ranking of objects. However, a practical issue of PRA is its sample complexity. As shown in this example, sometimes you need more samples to resolve ambiguity in ranks. In the worst case, you will need the outcome of every possible comparison, which is ob obviously too much for large object sets. To resolve this issue, our idea is to utilize information about rank difference. Let's examine this example again. The reason for this ambiguity is that we have the same amount of outcomes for comparing the two gentlemen and for comparing the gentleman with blonde hair and the lady. So a maximum entropy ranker will then assign the same score to the lady and to the gentleman with blonde hair. But when the two pairs are presented to a crowd worker, there is no doubt that the worker will say that the age difference between the pairs are different. The age difference between the two gentlemen is larger than that between the gentleman with blonde hair and the lady. So in this study, we consider soliciting information like this from workers and using it in aggregating pairwise comparisons. More generally, we say that the rank difference is the extent to which the two objects in a pair differs according to the prescribed ranking criteria. And our hypothesis is that with information about rank difference, the PRA can be solved with less samples. So this study investigates first how to solicit information about rank difference and second, how to utilize information about rank difference in aggregating answers. Let's consider how to get answers for rank difference. First, let's think about two existing ways to get answers. You may ask workers to input numbers directly. The advantage is that you can get precise answers if your workers are experts and answer your questions carefully. The disadvantages are twofold. On the one hand, the range of answers can be very large. Some workers might input very large numbers, while others might input very small numbers. So you may need to repeatedly collect many samples for the same pair to get a reliable answer. On the other hand, it is reported that the numerical answers are subject to workers' internal scales, so that, and that differs from workers to workers. Alternatively, you can create some options and ask workers to select one from the options. This method overcomes the disadvantages of the previous one, but it needs one to create options manually, which requires careful examination of the data and thus time consuming. So we propose to ask workers to compare the rank difference of two pairs, thus overcome the disadvantages of the second method. But there's a caveat. It requires a worker to consider four images before making a decision, while the former two method only requires a worker to consider two images. In other words, the burden on workers is doubled in this case, 
which can make the label contain more noise and more difficult to utilize. To reduce the burden on workers, we propose to interleave the two types of queries. In particular, we first show several existing queries, which ask them to compare two objects. And then we use these pairs to create our proposed query. In this case, the worker do not have to consider new pairs to answer our query. And more importantly, as we interleave both types, the worker is not required to memorize the images to answer our queries. Therefore, in this way, we can reduce the burden on workers. In short, there are two key points. On one hand, we will use already compared pairs for our proposed query. And on the other hand, we interleave both type of queries. Now, let's think about how to utilize answers to the proposed query. As many algorithms have been proposed for PRA to address different issues, in this study, we design a general learning objective for using the answers to the proposed query that can be combined with many existing algorithms. First, observe that many existing algorithms can be formulated as learning a utility function of object and annotator. For example, for the bradley terry model, this function corresponds to the exponential function of the ranking score S of an object. We will make use of this function u in designing the learning objective. Let me define some annotation first. We use e for the comparison outcome of oi and oj, e equals to 1 if oi is preferred over oj, and similarly, let e prime be the outcome of comparing oi prime and oj prime, e prime equals to 1 if oi prime is preferred over oj prime. And we make use of e with superscript 2 for the answers to the new query equals to 1 if the rank difference between OI and OJ is greater than the rank difference between OI prime and OJ prime. Then, given the comparison outcome of a pair, we can use this function M for the rank difference between the two objects. It is the result of the preferred object's utility minus the other object's utility. So with function M, we are ready to state our learning objective. In this equation, the ReLU is a function that returns its argument if its argument is greater than zero, and it returns zero otherwise. As you can see, our learning objective will penalize for the violation against the answers to the new query, and then by minimizing this objective function, we can learn a utility function that is consistent with the answers to the proposed query. There is one more issue that was mentioning, the object-dependent error. Query workers might have different error rate for different objects. For our age ranking task, it is reported that humans are subject to own age bias and gender bias. This means that a worker might make less mistakes in recognizing certain group of samples. However, existing PRA algorithms only consider annotator-dependent errors. For example, they might make assumption that careless workers tend to make more mistakes on all samples than careful workers. The difference here is that the annotators are assumed to have the same error rate for all objects. Here I include two figures to illustrate the two error patterns. The x-axis and the y-axis are the true ranking scores of objects. The triangle and the rectangular denote two pairs of objects. This will help you understand the difference in error patterns. In the case of annotator-dependent errors, as long as the rank difference between the two objects stay the same, the probability won't change in regardless of the ranking scores. Meanwhile, for object-dependent errors, the error probability becomes different as the ranking score becomes different, even if the rank difference stays the same. The motivation for handling object-dependent error is that, as the new query involves two, two pairs of objects, it is more sensitive to object-dependent errors than a canonical one, so we need to handle object-dependent error properly to make use of answers to the new query. To handle object-dependent error, we propose to use a mixture model for utility function. This is a mixture of exponential functions. There are v components shared by all annotators. They are scaled and shifted exponential functions. Each of these functions can be considered as a ranking function for objects that are, which are sensitive to part of objects and not sensitive to the rest. 
Each worker will have its own weights for these functions, so each worker can have different sensibility for objects. The parameters to be learned are the ranking functions, mixture weights, and embedding vectors for objects. They can be learned by maximizing the log likelihood of answers to the existing query or and in combination with our proposed learning objective using the answers to the new query. Now, let me present our experiments. We're using total 10 datasets in, exper in experiments. They cover a range of applications and differ in size. For the first eight datasets, we generate synthetic answers for the proposed query. For the last two, we create them using answers from the real crowd workers for the proposed query. We use the candles tau as the evaluation metric. It is within the range of minus one and one and a larger value indicates that the inferred ranking is more consistent with the true rankings. Here is the results for using the existing query only. Here we include three alternative methods. BT assumes answers are free of noise. CrowdBT and HBTL handles annotator-dependent errors with different ideas. As you can see, the proposed MOE performs the best on the H, Reading, and the Night datasets. HBTL performs the best on the Olympic, Bike, and the Character datasets, and BT performs the best on the Cheat and Visitor datasets. These results show that MOE has comparative performance on SOTA methods for PRA. Note that no method achieved the best performance for all the eight existing datasets. This observation supports our motivation for proposing a general learning objective. The best algorithm for varies from task to task, so it is better to let the proposed query benefit a wide range of algorithms. Then let's see the results for using both types of queries. For each dataset, the Y1 rows are results for using the canonical query only, and the Y2 rows are the result for using both queries. The total number of labels are the same for these two cases. We make two observations from this table. On the one hand, answers to the new query benefits all the four algorithms on all the eight datasets. On the visitor dataset, the candles tau of all methods becomes two times better when using both types of queries. These results clearly support our claim for using information about rank difference for PRA. On the other hand, using both types of queries, the proposed MOE method achieved the best performance on six of the eight datasets, which justifies our claim for modeling object-dependent errors. Here are results on the synthetic datasets, which reveals insights for how the proposed query should be combined with the existing one. In these experiments, labels arrive in rounds, so we can observe how the performance changed as the label accumulate. At each round, the learner receives a batch of labels. In each figure, the x-axis is for the round index, and the y-axis stands for the candles tau for algorithms. These five figures differ in the ratio of new queries. The first figure illustrates the results for spending 50% of the labeling budget on the new query, and the last one stands for using 10% of the labeling budget for the new proposed query. In each figure, the colors of lines denote the results for different error rate. Solid lines are results for using both queries, while dashed lines are results for using the canonical query only. As a general observation, it is beneficial to use at least 20% of the proposed query to achieve improved performance. Performance becomes worse when using less queries when ans answers contain noise. If you are interested, you are welcome to check our paper for detailed analysis. Finally, this table presents results for using the real answers for the new query. We created these datasets using the objects of the bike dataset and the cheat datasets. Crowd workers were recruited to answer a combination of the existing queries and the new queries. On both datasets, all methods have better performance when using both types of queries, although the improvement is not as significant as using the synthetic answers for the new query. These results suggest that perhaps the new query is more difficult than the existing one, so crowd workers may, might make more mistakes, but nevertheless, it is beneficial to use both types of queries for PRA. In addition, the proposed MOE has the best performance on cheat new datasets, while the crowd BT algorithm has the best performance on bike new dataset. This result kind of confirms that the proposed MOE can have better performance on some tasks. 
Finally, please let me conclude our paper. Information about rank difference is important to PRA, but so far it has not been properly used. So we first propose a new type of query for PRA in order to solicit such information. This query is designed in a way to minimize the extra burden on workers. Then, we propose a learning objective for using answers to the new query, which can be combined with many existing PRA algorithms. As the new query is more sensitive to object-related errors, we also propose a new PRA algorithm to handle such errors. Lastly, in experiments on 10 datasets, we thoroughly confirm the efficacy of our proposals.